In this video, I want to derive some equations that you can use to solve constant acceleration uh, problems. In fact, a large number of the problems you see in kinematics use these constant acceleration equations, at which a uh, reasonable question is, why can't you just tell me what the ex equations are so we can go solve these problems? And, and that's a good question. A and the answer is uh, because there's enormous amount of confusion is generated by these equations and books are often almost pathological in how they help uh, 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 generate this confusion. And so I want to show you where these equations come from so you can know what they're telling you and what they mean and that will help you use them when solving physics problems. Okay, so before we found the three functions in time for constant acceleration. Acceleration, velocity, and position in one dimension. The acceleration is constant, the velocity is is given by the initial velocity, the velocity at t is equal to zero uh, plus a t, and then the, the position as a function of time is given by the position at t is equal to zero plus the initial velocity times time plus this term uh, in the with the acceleration, one half a t squared. Okay, so these functions are valid for all time. Okay, well, that's great. But when often when I solve problems, I'm not really interested in, in what's going on for all time. I want to know what's happening at two specific points in time. And so I want to use these expressions to derive other uh, relationships that relate the acceleration of velocity and position at two specific points in time. Okay, so let's let's identify those points in time. So I have, I'll call my first time some initial time, t with a subscript i, and some final time, t with a subscript f. Another parameter that I'm often interested in is the time interval, which is t final minus t initial. I'm going to go kind of slowly so we keep the notation very clear of, of what we're doing. Next, I'm going to identify the initial position. The initial position is the position function evaluated at the initial time. Initial position function, right there. Okay. The final position, which is x subscript f, is defined to be the position function evaluated at the final time. Again, there's that function. My initial velocity is the velocity function evaluated at the initial time. And the final velocity, oh, and this is, oh, we're on the x axis, so I'll give it a, I've given my, I'm in one dimension, and I'm calling my one dimension f, so we can uh, add a subscript f telling us, uh, sorry, subscript s, x, telling us we're on the x axis. And so the final velocity then is the velocity function evaluated at the final time. Okay, so we can also then calculate the position difference, which is the final position minus the initial position, and the velocity difference is equal to the final velocity, final velocity, minus the initial velocity. And then, of course, the uh, final, the initial acceleration is just a, and the final acceleration is just a because that's the one assumption we're using through all of this is that the acceleration is constant. Okay, so these are how I define my, my terms at these two points in time. And now I want to create relationships between them that I can use to solve problems. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is let's uh, start with velocity. Let's, let's evaluate these right here. So my initial velocity is equal to the velocity function evaluated at, at the initial time. That's right here. So that's my velocity at time is equal to zero plus a times the initial time, right? My initial time doesn't have to be zero. It's just the earlier of the two points in time that I'm interested in. Okay, so now my final velocity is going to be the uh, 
the velocity at t is equal to zero plus a times the final time. And now I can calculate this difference, and so delta v, which is at uh, final minus x initial, so this minus this, and so the, the initial velocities are going to cancel, and so I'm just going to get a t final minus a time initial, which I can pull out the a, I get t final minus t initial, which is delta t. Okay, so there's my first relationship. <clears throat> Let's get that here. I'll put this, yeah, this right here. So delta v is equal to a delta t. And this is um, commonly written to to bring out this, this delta v in terms of, of the original parameters. So let me do that here. So if I, I pull, uh, uh, put in the, the actual final and initial velocities for that, I get the final velocity then is equal to v times the initial velocity plus a delta t. So th these, these are the, the same expressions. This is in terms of delta v, and we're here I've, I've uh, brought out the delta v. Okay, so notice you can see where a lot of the confusion is coming from because this expression right here looks a whole lot similar to that. But they're not. Those are, in, in fact, books might even write them the same way. Uh, but they're not the same thing. This is a function for all time. This is a relationship between two, two specific velocities evaluated at two specific points in time. Hey, this is an independent variable here, t. This is a time interval, the difference between these two points in time. They're not the same thing at all. And so you want to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's continue. So now we have uh, delta v, let's calculate delta x. Now we're going to use let's, this, this right here. So I'll start down here. The x initial position is the position function evaluated at the initial time. So that's the initial position plus the initial velocity times time, uh, time the initial time or plugging in the initial time, plus one-half times the acceleration times the initial time squared. And the same token, the final position is the position at t is equal to zero, plus the velocity at t equals zero times the final time, plus one-half times the acceleration times the final time squared. Okay, so I've just used this expression to plug in uh, those times to get the initial and final position. All right. So I'm going to bring this up here because I'm going to do some algebra on these. Uh, unfortunately, there, sometimes you just have to do the algebra. And so we're going to, I'm going to walk you through that here. So I'm going to take the difference between these two. So delta x uh, is the final minus x initial. So I'm going to subtract the uh, initial from, from all of these. And so I get delta x is equal to, well, x naught minus x naught, that cancels. And so I get the initial velocity, t final, minus the initial velocity, no, not the initial velocity, the velocity at t is equal to zero, which is different than my initial velocity, possibly. So this is the velocity at t is equal to zero times t final, minus the velocity at t, at t is equal to zero times t initial, which could be something else, plus one half a t f squared, minus one-half a t i squared. That's here. Okay, and so, well, okay, well, there's my my position function, uh, my position difference, maybe that's it. Um, the, the problem is, I don't really, I may not know what this is. If I have my initial and final times or something other than zero, uh, I'm, I, I don't want to mess with this. I'd like to find this in terms of my initial and final position. And so I can do that. Uh, sorry, initial and final velocity. So I can do that using uh, this expression right here, here there, that one. And so I note that v, the initial um, uh, velocity at t is equal to zero, is equal to my velocity at my initial time, t sub i, minus a 
t sub i. Okay, if I just solve this expression, expression for the velocity at t is equal to zero. And now I'm going to substitute that into here. Okay, so first I'm going to um, I'm going to pull out this, uh, just looking at this, this term right here, this initial, this velocity at t is equal to zero, pull that out, I get t final minus t initial plus this other stuff. And so now I can substitute in this expression and I get my initial velocity minus my acceleration times my initial time times this final time minus initial time. And now I have these two terms I'm going to bring down. 1 half a t final squared minus 1 half a t initial squared. All right. Well, we still have some algebra left to do, but hopefully you'll be able to, f to follow what we're doing so far. Now let's, let's multiply. Let's get too much to yellow makes my, making my eyes hurt. <laughs> we'll, we'll move it around here. Uh, if I were to do that. So I multiply this, this out. And so I get, uh, V my initial velocity times my, um, uh, time interval, final minus t initial, minus, now this is the other terms, a t initial times t final, that's these two terms, and now plus a t initial squared, right? And so that's this term times that term, the two minuses give me a positive. And then I have plus one half a t final squared minus one half a t initial squared. Okay, so what can I do with this? Well, all right, so so this right here is just v my initial velocity times my time interval delta t. And now I have, here's a negative one half a t i squared, and here's just a a t i squared. And so I add those together, I'll get a positive one half t i squared. So if I bring that here, I get plus one half a t i squared minus a t initial t final plus one half a t final squared. And aha, I've got an algebra trick that's going to save me here. So here's my initial velocity delta t plus, and this whole thing here, is equal to uh, one half a. So I pull out. I pull out a one half a. Should I? Should I just do pull out the one half a? Fine. Let's let's do that. If I pull out a one half a, this gives me t i squared minus. Now it's got to be two uh, t i t final, right? So I, I, this, this interior one, I multiply by two over two. So then when I pull out a one half a from all three terms, there's still this two in the numerator there. Okay. Then plus t final squared. Okay. And this, aha, right there is t i minus t f quantity squared. So I'm done. Now I have my f position difference is equal to my initial velocity times my time interval plus one half times the acceleration times the time interval squared. In fact, this is commonly written again, sort of expanding out this, uh, 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 position difference like we did before, and so we get the final position is equal to the initial position plus my initial velocity times the time interval plus one half the acceleration times the time interval squared. Yay! All right. It took some work, but we got there. But again, you see the confusion. This right here looks a whole lot like this here. And again, some books just write them the same way. If you assume that your initial time is zero and you just let t equal t final, <laughs> you can write this 
exactly like this with the exactly the same symbols. Um, <laughs> and you have two different equations written exactly the same way. And so that can be enormously confusion, confusing. Just remember, this, these equations right here are true and valid for all time, where these expressions, this one right here, and this one right here, are true for two specific points in time, which is what we usually want when we're uh, solving sort of uh, kinematics problems. And if as long as long as you're still not comfortable with it, it, it still seems confusing, make sure that you always keep the notation very explicit instead of trying to simplify it right away. Once you get very comfortable, you can simplify your notation so you don't have to write as much. But until you get to that, and that, that's what sort of books are assuming, right? they're experts, but until you get that comfortable, make sure you uh, keep everything as explicit as possible so that when you look at this expression, you can identify what these terms mean. This here's my final position, initial position, the specific positions in time, specific velocities in time. These are time intervals. And keep, and as long as you can look at those symbols and extract the meaning of the words from them, you're going, you're going to be much further on to, in being able to apply these relationships successfully.